when should I use Flutter? When should I use React Native? So this doing this on React Native will make you fucking cry. And maybe if you find a module, some open source thing, it will be buggy. Dart is not the best language, it's not sexy, it's super object oriented. Hello everybody. Welcome to this uh, very nice review of Flutter versus React Native. On this review, we're going to talk about many things that I found out while I was working with Flutter versus React Native, what I think is good, what I think is bad. And this is again, my opinion only, it's not the truth, it's just what I think as a developer and my opinion has changed through the years and will keep changing forever. So this is an opinion that I have by today, to this day, all right? So don't quote me on this in 20 years, 10 years, five years. Things change, developers change, frustration changes, the way we see things change. Keep that in mind. Now, Flutter. Flutter is a Google product, React Native, Facebook product, we know this. Big difference though, Google wants to dominate the cross-platform thing. They really are putting all the resources they have into this. They have done an amazing job they have, the support is great. They have done great stuff, but it's just very different from React Native. So when we say maybe they're gonna compete, I don't think that will happen. React Native is an open source project from Facebook. They don't use React Native 100% on the application. That's why they don't maintain React Native as if they depended on it. They use it as a, many of the languages they use, but it's not something that they're really focusing on. With Google, they have built, like I think the AdWords app is full on Flutter. So they are really, they really wanna find like the holy grail of cross-platform and that makes sense. So they just have different goals. They have different goals. Now, one of the goals of Flutter is to basically give you everything out of the box. So for example, if you open up a Flutter project, you have navigation. You don't have to install navigation. If you, you need camera, I on, I'm sure as hell they have camera. If you need, I don't know, icons, they're there. If you need animations, done. If you need transitions, they're there. Everything is out of the box with Flutter. With React Native, the approach is different. They are trying to say, actually, no, they don't have navigation by default. You need to grab that package from somewhere else. They don't have camera by default. You need to grab that package from somewhere else. They don't have icons by default. You need to grab it from somewhere else. So basically Flutter is like a big thing like a big box where you just have everything there and React Native is basically choose your own adventure kind of game. You get the packages that you need. And this is something that today as 2019, 28th of June, I prefer Flutter in this case because I have dealt with React Native before and I know how it feels to have something so basic like the navigation not being supported by the core team of React Native. So for example, if I find a bug on React Navigation, I depend on the amazing people that built the React Navigation, but I depend on them to fix it. Um, if there is a new release and it breaks something, I have to wait for the third party developer to make it compatible again. So I don't like depending in so much people, basically in so many libraries. And this is something that in React Native kind of happens and it happens a lot. And when there is a bug in React Native, if you have worked with it, it's almost an impossible bug to fix which is different on the web, but in React Native, I just prefer, I would prefer if Facebook took a little bit more ownership of the product and was like, actually, you know what guys, we're going to give you a default supported, designed, everything, navigation for React Native, but they don't. They are just trying to eliminate the amount of things they support. So for example, if you go here and if you go to the web view of React Native, they're telling you, that they're not gonna support WebView anymore from the core. They are going to use now the community WebView solution. So they're going to basically stop maintaining so many core components and they're gonna give the opportunity for the community to come up with these components, which is a great idea and open source is great, you know, but I just, I, if I make an application, I don't like to depend in so many third party people. And in the case of Flutter, I just, I just depend on one team, which is the Google team and it's Flutter. Now, having said this, we need to talk about Google. 
Google kills software, like they kill the stuff they make a lot. There is an amazing app called Google Trips and they're gonna kill it. There is another app called Inbox and they kill it. They keep killing shit, they kill Google Plus, they kill so many things. So they put resources, they put marketing, they put design, and then one day they say, okay, we learned our lesson, we're gonna kill this thing. So by for now, I hope they don't kill Flutter, uh, but it's a risk that we have to, kill, we have to take. I don't, I don't know if they're gonna kill it eventually. Or even if they don't kill it, what if they take the resources away and there is less developers? Um, we don't know. That is something that we're gonna have to hope in the future. All right, the other thing that I wanna talk about is that Flutter being a Google product, it just screams Google everywhere. A, Google, a Flutter app, you know it's a Flutter app when you see it. Else, it takes a lot of code to on google eyes an app. Most apps made by Flutter look like Google apps, even if they are from an iPhone. This is because, as I said in the previous video, the architecture of Flutter is different than React Native. So for example, if you put a loading indicator on React Native, it's gonna look different iOS and Android. It's going to respect the host rules. But with Flutter, they don't respect the host rules, they just draw some Google stuff there. So in that case, I really like React Native more since I don't have to spend time and code de-Googleizing um, de yeah, de the app. So that is something I really don't like. Now, another thing that I, of course, prefer React Native and React more is the NPM, the JavaScript community. It's amazing. And I can use a package that I use on the web. I can use it for my React Native or NPM package. So that is something that I really miss when I work with Flutter, the fact that there is not so much access to the community. That's my opinion in the comparison. Now, how did I feel learning Flutter? Um, I believe that the learning curve, curve is a little bit higher because you need to learn a new language, which is Dart. Dart is not the best language, it's not sexy, it's super object-oriented. Everything is classes, everything is inheritance, everything is a method, and I don't like that. I don't like object-oriented programming. I prefer um, functional programming more. So in that case, I, I cannot work with hooks, for example, React Native. I cannot work with context like, like I work on so in that case, I kind of I, I give that point to React Native just because I just like functional programming more. But you and me have different tastes. So if you love object oriented, baby, come to Flutter. All right. Now another thing, learning Flutter just felt easier in my opinion because again, Google did an amazing job building this thing. So the documentation is in one place, in one place only. They have an amazing documentation, and most of the widgets they have. They are they uh, make videos, they make examples, so it's really, really complete and it feels very, very stable. Also, the way that they make videos, for example, like this video, they make like the video, the flutter of the week, something like that, right? And they just show you. Look at that. Screens are these. Look at this one, safe area. So we're gonna support safe area, blah, blah, blah. And they just show you like this. It's a one minute video, but it's great. Now, also, one of the things that I really like about Flutter is the fact that they have thought about issues. So for example, there is a widget for almost anything. It's incredible. For example, this one, they already know that the screens have a notch. So they're telling you, use safe area. We thought about this. And if you use safe area, everything is gonna be safe. Stuff like that is really, really cool because they thought about it before. On React Native, we don't have this. We have to come up with it, all right? So now it's time for me to show you what I built on, on Flutter. So you see where I'm coming from. And now Flutter, this is one thing you need to remember. When I was learning Flutter and when I was learning, like building stuff, I was thinking all the time like, oh my God, I know how to do this in React Native. And it will take me such a short time that Flutter makes it so complicated. And sometimes I was thinking, oh my God, this will be impossible to do in React Native. So basically the things that I know how to do are hard to do, but the things that I don't know how to do are easy to do coming from a React perspective. That means that Flutter, is ba Flutter makes it basically makes Easy things hard, but hard things easy, which is the opposite of React Native, which is easy things easy, hard things hard or impossible. Let me show you why. This, this bar here, for example, this I could do on React Native really quickly. In Flutter, it takes me more time. It takes me more code, which is okay. Because if you look at these cards and if you see the animation of the cards, as you can see, the cards grow and shrink based on where they are. This didn't take me that long. This was very straightforward. Once I figured out how to do it, I think I could replicate this anywhere now. 
So this doing this on React Native will make you fucking cry because it will be almost impossible. And maybe if you find a module, some open source thing, it will be buggy or it wouldn't work. It wouldn't be in-house. But in this case, this is something that I just did with Flutter. I didn't download anything. I just configured a couple of things and it just worked. Look at that beauty. All right. This is light. I know it doesn't look like much, but if you have worked with React Native, you have you, you know that this would be like killing yourself kind of job. All right. Now I made another one as well, just to show you what I mean by that. This one is here and I want to show you how it works. But while this starts, it's really cool the fact that um, Flutter has a very good developer experience. By this, I mean everything, literally everything is in-house. As you can see, the simulator starts up very well. There is a syncing thing. There is a debug menu. It's super fast. The, the, the text changes super fast. It's really well done. It is really quickly. I didn't, I didn't see so many bugs. When I work with React Native, there are sometimes bugs that I just have to restart the whole application altogether. But in this case with Flutter, it just works out of the box. Again, this is a cool thing. Now, if you look at this thing, for example, these cards, doing this on React Native with Flexbox would be so quickly, but it took me a while, a longer time on Flutter. But doing this scroll thing here, right? And making the, the rectangle follow the scroll and handle this thing, it didn't take me no nothing. It didn't take me a long time. So that's the difference. Now also, if I open this up, as you can see, the image will come up. This on React Native, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. And if somebody showed me, I'll be like, no, you can't do that on React Native. But in Flutter, it's possible. And it feels nice to have so much control over the screen. Like I said, Flutter, easy things, complicated, but complicated things, super easy, all right? So that's my review right there. Uh, that's my opinion. Now, the last question would be, React Native or Flutter? This is what I'd have to tell you, both, both. React Native is super easy if you know React. You don't have to study React Native too much. It's very straightforward. And Fl Flutter is fun to learn because you can do animations and you feel more powerful. So both of them. Now, Nicolas, when should I use Flutter? When should I use React Native? I cannot tell you when you should do it, but I wanna tell you when I would do it. If I have a JavaScript backend or a TypeScript backend, if I have a GraphQL backend and a React.js frontend, I'm gonna choose React Native for my application. I will sacrifice all the things I talked about. I would sacrifice animations. I would sacrifice control. I would sacrifice everything because of the integration. If you have a React developer, he knows React Native immediately. If you have JavaScript or TypeScript, you can also do TypeScript on the frontend with your resolvers of GraphQL and integration will be amazing. If you, are, if you are working with React and React Native, maybe I will work with React Web and I will cover three platforms, Web, iOS, and Android with one code base. So it depends. Now I would do that. If I have a backend in JavaScript, I will go for React Native 100% and TypeScript as well. Now, if I have a backend on Django, if I have a backend on Haskell, if I have a backend on Java, maybe I will give it a go on, Re on Dart and Flutter because I already am not using JavaScript. So anyways, if I have a backend on Java, I need to make the frontend on something different. If I have a backend on Python, I need to make the frontend on something different. So if I'm only working with one language, which is JavaScript, I will keep React Native. If I'm working with Python on the backend, that means that I don't give a shit about different languages. So I'm gonna go for Dart on the frontend on my website. Now also there is exciting news about Flutter. They're saying that it's gonna have a uh, web support. I'll look very forward to that. Um, and yeah, that's my opinion. I think that both of them, they're accomplishing the same thing, but they have different philosophies and they have different use cases. Uh, and it just depends on your requirements. If you're making an application that has some navigation, some notifications, some text and some Ajax, you don't need Flutter. If you're making an application where you want 100% control of all the animations and all the pixels of your screen. And it's very important to you that when you click here, the image pops up in a beautiful way, then you need Flutter. But there are different requirements, all right? Different requirements for different things. I made this application called Nomad Movies. It's on the App Store, Apple, uh, Google Play. And that is the best example, Google Play. That is the best example of what I can tell you um, is a good Android, is a good app for 
for React Native. This content, content, some some screens, some things, and that's it. This is the perfect thing. All right. So that's it. That's my opinion. And I hope that you let me know your opinion. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you are learning. Let me know what you have done. And that's it. Thank you for watching. And uh, I hope to see you on our future Flutter course that I'm trying to get ready for you. So see you in the next one. Let me know what you think. And remember, don't marry a technology. Don't marry them, okay? React Native, don't get a team. It's not about teams. I'm a React team or Dart team. Don't marry any of those, all right? Use the right tool for the job. Thank you for watching. I love you. Eat kimchi and sangyupsal. Bye-bye.